Prince Edward Island. The Gentle Island. A place that many people enjoy as a vacation destination. When you think of Prince Edward Island, the things that come to mind are the beaches, farms, fisheries, and of course, the people. But that's not everything. Hidden behind the beauty, there is ugliness. This ugliness comes from climate change, and it's making PEI one of the most at-risk places to live in Canada. In order to fully understand the problem, we must first define it. Climate change is defined as a change in weather patterns that last for long periods of time. But what causes this change? Mainly humans. So what do humans do? Well, we have created countless ways to produce carbon dioxide, like cars, planes, trains, factories, and buses. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which basically means that it traps the heat within the atmosphere and prevents it from escaping to space. So what's the problem with that? The problem is that it has and will continue to cause increases in global temperature, which can have devastating impacts on everything spanning from wildlife to major storms and droughts. Climate change truly is a global problem that affects everywhere in the world, and PEI is no exception. Here's Dr. Adam Fennick, leader of the UPEI Climate Research Lab, to speak about the island's vulnerabilities. Well, our island here is essentially just a big sandbar, and that's the big problem. It's made out of sanded sandstone, very little hard stone, hard granite that a lot of other islands would have. Um, so we will erode away to nothing at some point. Um, you know, probably in geologic times, like 10,000 years, but uh, you know, we are not designed as an island to be here for very long. The sea levels are rising too. We do have a tidal gauge in Charlottetown, and it tells us that the, uh, uh, the seas around uh, Charlottetown did rise 32 centimeters the last century. So we anticipate that that's going to increase, um, go up by uh, 2 to 2.7 meters over the next, next 100 years. That's pretty incredible. With the ideas of Dr. Fennec in mind, we decided to approach the public to get their opinions on the impacts of climate change on Prince Edward Island. I've been here for two years now and I've noticed the winters aren't as bad as they were last year. I feel, feel like this year's past winter is much warmer and our snowfall has been affected because of that. Also, I think the climate change will affect the sea, the ocean level rise here and that could impact our small little island a lot, I feel like. Years ago, it seemed to be we had a lot more snow than we do now. For instance, down on the North River, uh, River down there, they used to have horse racing in the winter time and uh, Ice is not thick enough to do that anymore, as well as the tides are much higher. Every year, uh, it, it seems that um, recently, I've, I've noticed that the storm surges and the sea level rising ha is, is much more dramatic than I re recall it being when I, when I was younger. Certainly Prince Edward Island is one of the uh, places where we're all experiencing um, climate change. Things are getting warmer, drier, and coastal erosion is quite significant. And so in that way, I kind of know that most uh, islanders really do have a good handle on climate change and its impacts because they see it for themselves. I don't get many climate deniers ever approaching me on the island because people are living it. They, they see that the climate's changing. Climate change is clearly affecting Prince Edward Island in a major way. The citizens of this island must learn to adapt to these changes because there is no way to stop climate change. There are, however, ways that we can prepare ourselves for these changes. Um, if you have infrastructure close to the shore, you can pick it up and move it away. Um, you can mitigate some of the damage by putting uh, houses on stilts, or you can armor. It's better to not think about armoring property, um, armoring your, the coast property by property. And this has actually been um, 
uh, banned in many places uh, around the world. Because it's better to think of the coastline as a whole and to come up with an engineering plan that uses a lot of natural um, forces as well. Uh, because you can also do things to stabilize your coastline by planting trees or planting vegetation. To teach the public about the changes that are happening and are yet to come, Adam and his lab have constructed an interactive video game that demonstrates the effects that rising sea levels have on coastal regions of the island. We had a, I had a couple of undergraduate students who said, why don't we create a video game? So that's what we did, is we created um, Clive, which is Coastal uh, Impacts Visualization Environment. And it's a video game that allows you to fly over the island and raise and lower the sea levels. And it's been very impactful. By, al by allowing to show fast changes in environmental change, allows people to see their vulnerability. And so we took the tool around to eight communities a few years ago, and um, we were able to document scientifically that it increased people's uh, knowledge and awareness about sea level rise and coastal erosion. It um, increased uh, their concern about it and also increase their willingness to adapt or take action to climate change. So Clive is one of these really great tools that really brings the impacts of climate change home to communities and to individuals. We continually uh, tour it around uh, Prince Edward Island to raise knowledge and uh, increase uh, the willingness for people to take action on climate change. For this island, it is no question that climate change is playing a major role not only in the structure of the island as a whole, but also in the lifestyle of the citizens who live here.